So as we come to the fourth and last part of the Mino, uh, it's a very, uh, very interesting little thing happens at the end here. After this, I would say, epic attempt on the part of Socrates to prove with the slave boy through asking him questions about this problem in geometry that knowledge is really recollection. So Mino's uh, paradox that you cannot inquire into that which you do not know uh, is actually a fallacy because we just need to remember everything that we learned before we became human beings. Um, I would say, yes, this epic, incredibly important, famous section of the Mino where he does this with the slave boy. Therefore, to prove to Mino that it's worthwhile for the two of them to continue to inquire into this thing that they don't know, that is, what is virtue. Um, Mino, again, tries to turn the conversation to his initial question about whether it's teachable or not. And Socrates, Socrates, who never gets exasperated by anybody, is uh, maybe he's exasperated at this point. He says, had I the command of you as well as of, as of myself, Mino, I would not have inquired whether virtue is given by instruction or not until we had first ascertained what it is. But as you think only of controlling me, who I'm your slave, and never of controlling yourself, you see he's, his irony and his suggestion here is very suggestive. Socrates, of course, is not literally Mino's slave, but he feels that, you know, he has to remind Mino that, that you can't treat everybody like that. And you probably shouldn't treat your slaves like slaves either. And that's really a very telling thing, what kind of person Mino is. Um, and never controlling yourself, such being your notion of freedom, I must yield to you, for you are irresistible. And now, and therefore, I have now to inquire into the qualities of a thing which I do not as yet know the nature. So it's all been lost on Mino. That is, Socrates' whole attempt to not instruct him about what virtue is, because Socrates says, I don't know what it is. But what he's been trying to do, obviously, is to instruct him into how one would inquire into something like virtue, anything, asking what it is, all of this. And especially this uh, initial objection to the question of whether virtue is teachable to say, well, you can't answer a question like that until you answer more fundamental questions. And that fundamental question is, what is the thing? Do you know what it is? How can you uh, weigh in on whether or not it's a particular quality, like being teachable, without having a fundamental knowledge of what it is? And that knowledge of what it is would be demonstrated by an ability to define it. And they haven't made a successful attempt to do that yet. So Socrates wants to start from the beginning uh, in the question of what virtue is, whereas Mino wants to go back to the beginning of his question, whether it's teachable. So all has been lost. All of this has really been lost on Mino, seemingly. It's not been lost on us. That's why it's good to read the dialogue. So Socrates gives in. He, he gives up. The, uh, the project of defining virtue, defining out what is, you know, which would be, what is that quality which all virtues or all examples of virtue share? All examples of virtue, when a woman does something virtuous, when a man does something virtuous, when an older person does something virtuous, when a younger person does something virtuous, etc., etc., it must all be because they've done something with a common quality, whatever it is that makes an action virtuous. And the different virtues, justice, wisdom, courage, moderation, etc., etc., if these are all indeed virtues, we should be able to isolate, we should be able to define and articulate what their common nature is. Mino has showed himself thoroughly uninterested and perhaps un incapable of engaging in this kind of fundamental philosophical inquiry. So Socrates gives up, says, okay, I'll take your question. Uh, and that leads, that question, whether virtue is teachable, takes up the last part of the dialogue it, under protest for the reasons I've just laid out. 
and different hypotheses, he says, are put forward. Well, if virtue is teachable, then it is. it must be knowledge. That virtue must be a kind of knowledge. And, and then we say, well, virtue is good. Uh, and then, you know, we ask whether it's, whether it's knowledge. And then the question is, well, is there any good that is not associated with knowledge? That is, can we think of anything good, truly good, which is not also kind of knowledge? And he says, no. I mean, even the, the good things that we talk about having in life, money, health, uh, quickness of mind, and then things like courage, he mentions, these are things that are only good if they are done with knowledge. They can also be extremely hurtful. A person with great intelligence may be destroyed by that intelligence if they don't use it right. A person with great physical beauty, same thing may happen. A person with great courage uh, may be destroyed if they don't use their courage in the right way. So the conclusion there, the tentative conclusion, is that, of course, virtue is teachable because virtue is knowledge, because we assume that virtue is a good. And if there is no good without knowledge, then virtue must be a kind of knowledge. And it seems to be a tentative conclusion from the first part of this last section. But then Socrates throws a monkey wrench in that. Uh, He says here, I will try and tell you why, Mino, you know, I do not track the assertion that if virtue is knowledge, it may be taught, but I fear that I have some reason in doubting whether virtue is knowledge. For consider now and say whether virtue, and not only virtue, but anything that is taught, must not have teachers and disciples. That is, if something is actually teachable, there must be teachers and students of it. It's kind of a shaky thing. He's, he's throwing something in there that he really wants to get. He's, he's opening up a new... Plato, through Socrates, is opening up a new issue. Uh, Socrates continues, and conversely, may not the art of which neither teachers nor disciples exist be assumed to be incapable of being taught? This is kind of shaky reasoning, but again, he's opening up a new thing. And, and why is he opening up? Well, in this next long paragraph, he tells you that he's never actually found anyone who is a teacher, a real teacher of virtue. And so if the, you cannot find existing teachers of and therefore students of virtue, then there's a big question about whether it's actually a kind of knowledge. Because if it were, then there, there would be teachers of it, just as there are teachers of mathematics, just as there are teachers of uh, carpentry, just as there are teachers of horse riding. There should be, if that, those are all forms of knowledge and skill, if virtue is knowledge, there should be teachers of virtue. And Socrates says, uh, I've never found them. And this brings in the fourth character, Anitus. There's a whole backstory with Anitus. The, the one thing you should know about this character, Anitus, is that he was a real person and that, that he was one of the accusers at Socrates' trial. And we all know, hopefully, about Socrates, that at the end of his life, when he was 70 years old, he was indicted brought to court on various charges, one of which was that he corrupts the youth of Athens through this habit he has of doing philosophy and asking them questions. And Anitus was one of his accusers. That's something that any contemporary reader of this dialogue would know. So we should know it too. I don't know how much it, how much light it sheds on what's going on here, but it certainly was something important to Plato to make this real historical person who was true enemy of Socrates into a character in this dialogue. Um, and he begins talking to Anitus, who's just sort of hanging around. This tells you that this whole dialogue takes place in public, right? Drawing the slave boy as a character because he's standing around, drawing Anitus because he's standing, sitting or standing around. So interesting. And what they get into is, you know, really not all that pleasant for Anitus because what Socrates asks him is whether there are any Teachers of virtue and these characters, the sophists, one of whom has been mentioned already, Gorgias, who are people who go around Greece um, claiming to be able to teach virtue, at least some of them. And Socrates, well, are these the teachers of virtue that, that we're looking for? And 
Anitis thinks that these sophists, these professional teachers of virtue, who are also primarily teachers of public speaking and logic, um, <clears throat> he thinks they're terrible people and that they're, they're, they're the last person you would go to if you wanted to become virtuous and learn virtue. Socrates says, well, well, who then are, are the teachers of virtue? And, and Anitis says, uh, um, well, any Athenian gentleman, right? So Socrates asks here, I have told him whom I suppose to be the teacher of these things, but I learned from you that I am utterly at fault, and I dare say that you are right. And now I wish that you, on your part, would tell me to whom among the Athenians he should go. Like, that is, if, you, if somebody's trying to learn virtue or wants his son to learn virtue, to whom should he send them? And Anaitis says, why single out individuals? Any Athenian gentleman, taking it random, if he will mind him, will do far more good to him than the sophists. And, and this gets us into pretty, uh, I don't know, tense territory, what the word is, touchy, because it really is about whether the typical Athenian gentleman, like Anaitis, really does know virtue and whether he's able to pass it on to his sons. And what Socrates points out, then, is that there are plenty of very prominent, <coughs> really great men in Athenian history who didn't have very uh, virtuous sons. That is, either they neglected to try to teach their sons virtue, or they were unable to do so. Again, this is very, this is, you know, I think clearly Plato's suggesting maybe one of the reasons that Anitis had such an animus against Socrates that he would indict him and put him on uh, put him on trial for for these things um, so uh, you, you know I mean the, 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 the and we get to the conclusion of the dialogue which is which is utterly sort of open-ended I mean we, we don't know if there are any teachers of virtue but we can't find them uh, it does seem that the fathers of Athens have been either unwilling or unable to teach their sons virtue. So whether virtue is teachable or not, you, you can't on that basis conclude that it's not, but there's no proof that it is, right? And so the dialogue ends with Socrates suggesting that virtue is simply a gift from the gods, uh, which is a very strange conclusion because that would basically say that you're born virtuous and it's a gift like any other gift, natural gift, and you can't get it if you don't have it. I don't think that he would really be very pleased with that conclusion, but we have to understand that everything in the fourth part of the dialogue is not on hypothesis. This is not the question that Socrates wants to be talking about. He wants to continue to talk about what virtue actually is, but he's been forced, he says, by Mino. So the dialogue... Uh, ends in this, it's, it's an amazing dialogue. If you've gotten this far, if you listen to these videos, you certainly, I hope, have picked up on how much admiration I have for it. It's, it's maybe the first platonic dialogue that I read when I was your age that really affected me. Uh, and I saw just how much was there. And really, uh, how a genius like Plato, who's a philosophical genius and also a literary genius, how much he could make of a simple question question whether, well, really the question, what is virtue, but also the associated question, whether virtue is teachable, how much he could make of it philosophically, and let's face it, dramatically, because the Mino is a great work of philosophy. It opens up so many philosophical questions for us, but it's also just a great dramatic conversation between these people. <clears throat> 